And ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to the next uh, session that is titled Regional Market Opportunities, New Initiatives. And for this session, may I please call upon Mr. P. R. Somasundaram, MD India, will go Council to present on an update on regulatory changes in India. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. P. R. Somasundaram, please. Right. Very good morning. Alistair, that was very, very interesting. But I must tell you a, a small story. I once took your presentation home, and my wife is a chartered accountant. I did uh, talk to her about, you know, portfolio, 10%, 15% gold, etc. And it turned out to be very difficult for me because she just uh, brought her gold holdings and said, my 10%. Now, would you please uh, tell me where your 90% is, actually? And that would have put my lifestyle at risk. Then I said, no, this is all for institutional, you know, and all. So I had to wriggle out of the conversation. So I'm always conscious that uh, when we talk of portfolio investments with Indian housewives, you have to be extra careful about it. But that was very interesting. Thank you very much. Now, I'm here to uh, talk about a few regulatory uh, and policy changes in India. Many of you in the room who have been tracking India would have heard about a lot of changes in the last five years through the remarks of uh, industry leaders, uh, cryptic comments from some people, uh, some kind of media reports which says the trade is not happy. So what I thought was uh, probably just give you a broader picture of what exactly is happening in the second largest market in the globe. And what can we expect more? <clears throat> what can we expect more from this? What is India today? India is all about big bold reforms as of now. There are four key drivers amongst various things which I can think of which drives everything that uh, the uh, Modi government does. Transparency, ease of business, inclusive growth, and digital uh, push on everything the government does. Now these are the strong pillars in which every change the government does is actually captured. For gold to survive and grow, it has to fit into these priorities of the government. Gold market in India grew in the last two decades, three decades, since the removal of the Gold Control Act, but it has grown at the cost of transparency, infrastructure, or standards. We grow, we have a very robust business, but they're not totally supported by these uh, strong pillars of growth. There is a certain feeling that uh, any conversation about gold is self-serving in the government circles. And therefore, you often saw the stick side of the government's approach in anything related to gold. So, we have now seen a change in the last five years. One of them is we now have the attention of the top leadership of India on gold. There is a genuine feeling that gold can become a very, very productive national asset. But it has to come with transparency and standards and infrastructure. That's what it is. So this is in summary my presentation. I don't need the rest of the slide, but he has given me 15 minutes, so I'll I'd rather use them. What have been the big changes in the market in the last five years, if you see? It's the second largest market. 90% of the gold is imported. Therefore, you have a problem of dollars, current account deficit. That continues to pose a risk, but we haven't seen any issues in the last six, seven years. And we do, with the way the government is going on other aspects, we shouldn't see this an issue in the future. It is an unorganized industry, very fragmented. So therefore, innovation, value addition, they have suffered a lot. The policies and regulations are very diffused. There's no central gold body. Anything on gold, you've got to go and talk to five people. <clears throat> there is a legacy. As I mentioned, it has grown the cost of transparency. So there is a gray market, and it is seen as a tool for tax evasion. There is lack of standards. The largest market, there's lack of standards enforcement. There is lack of price transparency, and industry is actually transitioning towards broader economic reforms, which, as I said, is all about transparency, tax compliance, financial inclusion, and digital. If 
you look at the industry itself, and now we have got this chart uh, some time back, 2000, 95% of the market was unorganized. In 2015, when we did the study, we realized that this has changed. Now you see about 30% is in national and regional chains. Many of them are listed as well. And about 70% is unorganized. This is, this is one of the big issues when you discuss the policies and regulatory changes. So I'm going to brush to this uh, presentation. As I said, I'll finish it in 15 minutes and be open for questions. We have been speaking to the government the last six years as the World Gold Council. We have been part of the various trade associations and individually too. We have approached the government. We, in, in fact, in 2015, we started this whole debate, why India needs a comprehensive gold policy. We did put together a few thoughts and they were appreciated, but they were probably too early for the time. Since then, we have issued a gold policy from the World Gold Council where we said there are four pillars. You need standards, infrastructure, you need mainstreaming policies, and you need make in India. So under these, we said these are all the various issues that the gold policy has to address. I'm not going to drain the slide. I'm just suggesting that we went with a set of recommendations. The good thing was it attracted the attention of the top, as I said, and they are engaged in every one of this. What happened was there were lots of changes. Still, it was not very comprehensive. The 80-20 rule, of which many of you would have been aware, uh, was revoked. But high taxes, 10%, still remain. Indian gold coin, one of my colleagues from the government mint is going to speak for five minutes after this. That was launched for the first time, gold monetization scheme. There is a sovereign gold bond with interest. They introduced an excise duty after a very long time to track the uh, purchases. Now the jewelers came out and uh, uh, actually closed shops for two full months. There is a tax number you've got to shop for anything about 3K. So there's a lot of things. Uh, the biggest thing, if you see, is demonetization, about which many of you might have heard. 86% of the currency was withdrawn on the 8th of November 2016. Absolutely. Everything had to go through the bank. Now that gave a great fillip to digital and financial inclusion. There was also this very big move then, 29 states and seven union territories. There were several types of taxes. All of them had rolled into one goods and services tax. And then you have AML guidelines. There is a draft uh, India good delivery standards. So quite a lot of changes but again, as I said, not comprehensive enough. You know, it is, it is some, there, some of these here, some of these from this department, but the direction is clear, transparency. And the three big announcements that were made in 2018, each of this is a very, very significant statement made on the floor of the parliament. The government will formulate a comprehensive gold policy. The government will establish a spot exchange the government will revamp the monetization scheme. Now, these are very big things. To say that government will form a policy to make gold an asset class. Now, that is a very, very significant statement. And therefore, what we are going to see in terms of regulatory policy changes are all going to fit into these three statements. And uh, since then, the government's think tank formed a committee, we were part of that committee, we were very happy to contribute, and they issued a recommendatory policy called Transforming India's Gold Market. There were 87 recommendations, and largely under five pillars. If you see, we recommended on the four pillars, they put it in the five pillars, but la everything that we said have been covered. It's on make in India, financialization of gold, which is mainstreaming, tax reforms, regulatory reforms, and skill development. So the government is also looking at this industry as a very, very significant contributor to the economy, but they just, as I said, want this to be transparent. And that affects the, uh, you know, some of the vested interests. So you are going to see some changes coming through, but, and there will always be reactions, not all positive, but the direction is very clear. We're going to see a very, very highly organized Indian gold market, which is a good news for the global gold industry. There's going to be transitional effect. 
which we have already seen, as you said, demand has been around 900 tons. But if you look, really look at 2016, when the monetization and goods and services tax were there, they, it took a big dip. 200 tons shaved off because everything became transparent. And since then, it's slowly inching back, but it is still nowhere close. The GDP has grown in the last two years. It's now 3 trillion, but still the gold demand is below 2010, actually. So will it catch up? Yes, it would, but it is not going to come easily. It has got to come with the acceptance of many of the reforms and probably a structural change in the industry. What has happened with all the changes that the government, it's a broader economic reform, is that the digital payments, this is again a chart I picked up from this, five, 50 times it's 5,000%. It has increased since demonetization. And this is actually going to drive the government's initiative. In fact, there was a news item recently where they said they're going to stop cash payments for jewelry purchases. Now, whether it's true or not, I do not know. But this is the direction in which the market is being taken through. And we are seeing, amidst all this fall in demand, we are also seeing consumers moving to new forms, digital platforms to buy gold, micro savers. This digital platform, there are two or three players in the market, including MMTC, PAMP, uh, Safe Gold, and others. We are seeing the kind of transactions coming through, fully tax paid invoices, even for a $1 purchase. It is tax paid, it is covered by an invoice. So for a, for a market which otherwise tries to avoid taxes, here is a small saver willing to pay all the duties and take the invoice and still invest 100 rupees. That's a big change. People always have been talking about 3 million transactions, 30 million transactions. I say that's not important. What is important is a guy who buys gold for 100 rupees is willing to pay 15 rupees to the government on taxes. Did you see the behavioral change that's coming through? That's very important. And this is, I would say, this is not fully picked up by the industry yet. There is, as I said, some vested interests. So you will hear more when you hear through the media any changes about India, you will hear it from those sources. So you may have to take a, a view which is in this broader context. And again, I put this chart, it might seem out of place, but it is not. You see, there's, a, there's always a, a, a mixed approach to issues here in India. And that's the beauty of India. You have the only precious metals assaying and training institute, which we initiated. There was a massive support from the trade. Everybody has funded it. And we have now run courses to train assayers. All the industry associations support it. But when you come to the mandatory hallmarking piece, they are still saying that this is not affecting my interest. I cannot be held responsible. So this is a... This is the scenario in India. You got on the one hand, everybody in intent, happy with, the, uh, with what is to be done. But when it comes to real implementation, they say, oh, it's affecting me. Uh, why don't you just uh, push it three years away? So this is, again, something is the uh, nature of that market. But it is changing, as I said, because the directions are coming from the very top. So what do we look ahead? We are, this is my last chart. We're looking at a comprehensive goal policy. It should come any time now. It will speak about everything. The Niti Aayog report, which reports to the Prime Minister, will now be adopted by the Finance Ministry, and that will be adopted by the Cabinet. We do expect it any time this year. There will be a central body for policy coordination. As I said, diffused policy, you may have a gold regulator. Favorable taxes and... Sorry. It's for me to stop. New gold-based financial products, we will have it in the mainstream. We will have delivery standards. We will have mandatory hallmarking. We will have a responsible gold sourcing framework. It's all absolutely ready. They're just waiting outside the door. Trading infrastructure will see a massive jump. We have no doubts about it. We will have a very, very robust world-class trading infrastructure supported by necessary guidelines. We will have a digital gold ecosystem. I'm very, very convinced about this aspect of India's gold industry. Digital is going to play a very, very big role in the Indian gold industry. And 
We will have skill development innovation, which is what the government wants, because India is the only country where 90, 80% is handcrafted jewelry. And the government is very clear that this skill set should not be lost, actually. And uh, we will also have a significantly developed refining and recycling market. Today, 40% of India's imports comes through Dore. In the last five years, Dore imports have increased from virtually zero to 40%. And the expectation is that maybe it will become 80% in the next five years. So we will have a very robust re refining market. Along with that will come a very, very organized recycling market. So we're going to see some very fundamental changes. And uh, that is uh, all I have to say. So you will hear more about this. You will hear you know, people not agreeing to what the government does. But I think the direction is set. As we said, we are in the Indian road with a <coughs> you know, world-class vehicle. You may see other vehicles coming through. You got to drive. That's the way it is. Thank you very much. And. Uh, yeah, I have uh, a colleague from the government mint, as I spoke about the Indian gold coin, uh, which it's still in the nascent stage. Uh, it's going to be distributed across through banks. So the government mint, uh, the general manager is here. He wanted to speak a few things. Again, the context is, you know, things about which you would not have heard about India, you will hear about this. So he has something to say for five minutes. So may I uh, invite Mr. Pradhan? to come and say a few words. Thank you very much. Good morning to all distinguished guests, our chairman, SVMA, foundation chairman, SVMA, and dear friends. I am a government ent entity. I am working for government of India. In India, government mint. This uh, mint is a factory producing all circulating coins, gold coins, gold refining, gold assay, and non-circulating coins, and again, the gold medals, medallions, and gold coins, which Mr. Soma Sandaram has already shown. This is the location of my factory. It's around 25 kilometers from Mumbai airport, uh, nearly one kilometer from railway, and Bombay port is also nearly one kilometer. Uh, this is a little background of my factory. It started long back during the British period in 1929, and slowly, slowly we diversified the factory. This is the India gold coin, the sovereign gold coin, which our prime minister has inaugurated, and one side is the our father of Nelson Mahatma Gandhi, and other side is the Asok Chakra. And this is, we have a special facility that is the certified material. Certified, we take a reference, certified reference material. We manufactured it by taking the help of three standards. And uh, the standard is B and D 4201. This is followed by this SI system international, and we take the certification from our National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi. Then we take this meteorological department help, and we make it, and we keep in a wooden box. The basic facility of this is that we can test the purity below 9999. That is 95 and 999 by a fire assay system. We have a furnace. We take with our reference material and the submitted gold to the furnace at around 1100 degrees centigrade. Then all the purity impurities will be melted there. Only gold and silver will come. And then we make it, this silver out by nitric acid solution. And we take, the, we test the purity whether the supplied gold is up to the mark or not. That is our certified raw, uh, certified item which we sell to the market also. And uh, this is the a special facility available in India government mint to test and to pro propagate the assay. This is our assay. 
this is the new development coin in our one of the mint so basically my point was we made gold coins we have the facility of certified uh, crm and by that we certify the uh, material of the gold if anything anybody has to ask they can ask when will the real next move that the, i like the word real next move um, what will be the real next move i guess that is the thing i, I there is a, a federal budget on the 5th of july uh, we hope to hear something about it uh, but one of the interactions which uh, i've been fortunate to have with the officials it's also saying they are now going to take it out of all these big bang announcements uh, in fact in one meeting they said it's now all agreed so there is no need to now make big announcement just each department has been told to work on it you will just hear it from the respective department so we, i expect sometime in july but uh, we may not also as i said not have any big bank announcement we may just have a gold board or something like that and then they will take over when will we see the mumbai bullion exchange um, i have a colleague prakash who he deals with it yeah uh, we do hope to see it uh, this year um, when i say not physically operating but all the steps have been taken we had national stock exchange sitting here we have bombay stock exchange mcx all of them have shown great interest and they are all fully prepared with uh, delivery standards uh, refinery selections and all that stuff so it should happen in the next 3 uh, 4 months um, what lessons can countries in southeast asia learn from india well i, I don't know i Uh, gold is one big market so i think everybody can learn from everybody else each market is uh, in a different state of development and growth so i don't want to comment on that is a more transparent indian gold market a smaller market well somebody obviously has put a comment uh, as a question uh, but i don't think so i think given the fact one very important data point you see indian imports where 1.3 to 1.5% of gdp few years ago 10 years ago today it is almost 1% and as the gdp becomes 5 trillion 7 trillion in the next 5 years even if you say the gold uh, imports rise it's going to be less than 1% so it is actually going to be in, in percentage terms you might see that this is very attractive but it is going to be a much bigger market so even a 1000 ton market is is not going to appear a, a problem that's why i said cad is now becoming less of a problem it might be there for the next 3 years or whatever it is so i don't think so it will uh, it will be a bigger market government discourages import with heavy duty even though india does not any plans to lobby for reduction of this well we don't lobby Uh, but we have given enough there must always be a rationale for any government doing anything uh, the rationale here is the gray market the government is very aware that 10% duty is uh, promoting gray market which does not support the overall transparency that the government wants then you need to put you know an army of people to keep uh, chasing which the government is not interested now there is more of self governance which is what they are saying digital self governance is the keyword so they are aware that this has to be brought down but there are some fiscal implications i expect the duty will come down uh, definitely the duty will come down on gold i have no doubt about it but it should come with the behavioral change of the trade it is very correctly told this 999.9 cannot be checked yes by fire as we can check 999 and 995 but for that purpose we have kept the spectrometry also in our laboratory do you have an opinion about the who the gold regulator will be well uh, i think uh, there are different views one is it could be the reserve bank of india just like china pboc uh, it could be uh, for the spot exchange it could be gold spot uh, it could be the sebi which is a securities regulator there is also a thought which is what we believe should happen that there will be an independent gold body which will take over all aspects of policy coordination that's that's what we expect but things can change 
because this government now, you will get some clarity in the federal budget. Yeah? Well, um, bullion banking, when can we see that? Okay, very shortly, as I said, all these are definitely as part of the recommendations, as part of the gold um, policy. Uh, I do expect bullion banking, spot exchange, mandatory hallmarking, uh, to all be a reality in the largest market in the next, let's take 12 to 18 months. I absolutely see that happening. Uh, there's a lot of confidence. If it does not happen, there will be strong reasons, but I, uh, I can't think of any right now. And uh, our conversations have said that this is going to happen. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. listening. Can we have a quick photo with both of you uh, in the centre? Thank you very much. And thank you very much to Mr. P.R. Sumasundram and Mr. Pradhan from the Government Mint. Thank you.